Let's recolor this image with the power of AI using Krita and Affinity Photo. Here I have a black and white image in Affinity Photo. So the first thing we need to do is to get it into Krita. I'll copy the image in Affinity Photo and then switch to Krita. In Krita, we can create a new document by pressing the Command or Ctrl N key. This will open up the file new dialog. From here, I'll use the Create New from Clipboard option. Let's accept the sRGB color profile and click OK. This creates a new document with the image from the clipboard. Now that we have our black and white image in Krita, we'll use Krita AI to generate a colorized version of the image. To do this, we'll add a control layer with the control method to line art and increase the strength to maximum. Let's press the generate button and see what we get. It generated a color image that slightly resembles the original. While the image is definitely not the same, the difference is not critical, as we are mainly focused on the colors. After applying and selecting the layer, I can easily copy and paste it into Affinity Photo. Although you could continue working in Krita, but as someone who primarily uses Affinity Photo, I find it more convenient to finish the image in Affinity. So, in Affinity Photo, I'll make sure the image is positioned correctly, and then we change the blend mode of this new layer to color, which actually gives a pretty nice result. We now have a solid foundation for the colors, and I'll show you how to fine tune the result later in the video. For now, a quick adjustment to the blend range will do the trick, and it's already looking pretty good. I'll remove the pasted layer from Affinity and switch back to Krita as I want to demonstrate another method for creating a color image that more closely resembles the original. Back in Krita, let's first remove the generated image. In the Krita AI panel, instead of pressing the generate button, we're going to create a new control layer. The control layer type is still line art and the layer it refers to will be the background layer, which is basically the black and white image we pasted earlier from Affinity. Let's press the Generate Control Layer button to create the line art from our image. Excellent, the generated line art can now be used as a control layer to generate images. Notice how the referring layer has changed to the line art layer we just created. I'll add a short prompt describing our image and press Generate. Beautiful! As you can see, we now have an image that closely matches the original black and white version thanks to the Line Art Control layer. I'll press Generate a couple of more times to get some different variations. Finally, I'll choose one of them, copy it and paste the generated image to Affinity Photo. Just as before, I can align the pasted image and use the color blend mode to get the image colorized. Depending on the generated image, the result will not be perfect. So here are a couple of adjustments we can do to make the colorization look natural. In order to get a bit of stronger color, we're going to duplicate the colored layer and then change the blend mode of the first colored layer to multiply. The multiply effect will be way too much, but with the help of the blend ranges, we can dim it down and remove the effect of the multiply from the lighter parts. This just makes the color a bit stronger in the darker areas. Next, we can see that some parts of the hair are not colored. To fix that, we can add a pixel layer on top and change its blend mode to color. I'll pick a color from the image and paint over the pieces of hair that are missing color. Once finished painting, we can change the blend range so that the painted color mainly targets the lighter hair. Since the layer we used earlier in Multiply has darkened the overall image, we can add a curves adjustment on top to brighten up the image to our liking. I'll add another pixel layer just below the curves adjustment and set its blend mode to color. We can now paint on this pixel layer to correct the remaining coloring errors, which in this case is mostly in the hair. 
Also, let's not forget to fine tune the blend range to make the painted colors blend more naturally. That looks pretty cool. Here is the before and here is the after. Now that we have a colored image, we can adjust it as a regular color image. For instance, I find the image a bit too red. I'll add a selective color adjustment, reduce the reds and shift the tone slightly towards a greenish hue. Pretty awesome. Remember to experiment with different generations in Krita AI to get colors you're looking for. For example, you can try a digital art style for generation. As we are only interested in the colors, it could work out nicely. To summarize, the process is pretty easy. We generate a control layer from which we create similar images in color. We then use the color from this image to colorize our original black and white image. Hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.